Hey, what's up guys? Yanis here. As promised yesterday uh, in my shorts that I'm gonna be back with an ice cream tutorial. If you haven't watched my shorts, go back and watch it. Otherwise, they will be because you're gonna watch the whole thing now, right? So I'm gonna be teaching you during the whole video. I'm gonna be showing you how to sketch and use colors and lines to create that 3D look that is gonna pop. So yeah, uh, let's jump in. As mentioned in my earlier videos, composition is very important. So before you start drawing anything, take a look at your list and kind of mark the space where you plan to put your object. So you see right now I'm marking the place where I want my objects to be. And I'm kind of sketching the general shape, making the what I'm, I'm going to draw and then the paint. So in my previous videos, I also mentioned this, that the composition is very important and it's important to have enough negative space um, for the whole um, painting because if you have limited negative space or you have too much negative space, the final artwork is not going to look good. And once you're happy with the final kind of sketch, then you will be able to already draw all the details of uh, whatever you're drawing and then, so to say, finalize the final sketch. When it comes to drawing um, hands, um, I find it's a little bit tricky for a lot of people to draw hands or, you know, faces or like eyes. It is a little bit tricky, but if you practice again, <laughs> you know, I would keep repeating that, but it is true. Like if you look at the object, long enough if you try to draw or paint it many times enough <laughs> then of course you'll be able to you know to do that like i wasn't born uh, with this super skills to draw and paint human body like the way it looks it also took me lots of practice and lots of time lots of observation to learn how to actually draw and then paint it in such a way that it looks so real it will not be like you you will have to practice as many times until you see the final result that you like uh, but again don't push yourself too hard if um, you you want to do portraits or you want to learn how to draw uh, body parts start with something small like what i used to do during my art school years i would just look at my hand and i would just draw it i mean i would look at my left hand and draw with my right hand but you know it's like a natural thing that you can see of course right now a lot of people are using references myself included <laughs> using references um, um, instead of like the real objects and i get it but at the same time if you have a like a real object that you can look at the volume at the shape um, and you can study that object it makes a huge difference. I mean, it's still useless, uh, not useless. It's still useful to look at the picture if you don't have access to like a real object. For example, you want to draw a car. I mean, yeah, you can just go outside and sit <laughs> on the bench somewhere and just draw the car in front of you that is parked like close to that bench, like whatever. A person who is looking for something to draw from, he or she will always find it, right? Our ice cream has three colors, yellow, orange, and peach. So I made three puddles uh, to use all the colors one after another and let them naturally communicate, as I say, or bleed into each other. I'm not aiming to have a stark transition between the three, but I just want them to mix slightly and create nice like merging hues. So for the yellow part of the ice cream, I mixed a transparent yellow medium with a touch of a pyrrole orange. I tried to replicate the color from the reference, but it doesn't have to go that crazy and just use some yellow paints um, that you have. Uh, the second puddle, um, as you can see, was just the pyrrole orange. Um, and the third was uh, transparent yellow medium with a touch of uh, light red and water. So basically, if you want to make a peach color, these are the two colors that you will need to use and add water uh, to dilute and make it as light, as transparent as you desire. As always, I prefer to start very light to build on the color and add more color when necessary. And now I'm adding more saturated pigment and you see how I left the colors without painting the whole thing. I did this because I wanted to move the paint and wash it off uh, like on the lightest areas. If you look at the reference, you will notice the top left kind of kind of side when the shape um, where the shape breaks is much darker than the other parts of the ice cream and uh, if you also shift your focus um, to the most right side of the ice cream again like at that kind of place where the shape breaks you will see there are more uh, shades and um, 
I would rather I would say that those are look even more like a grayish rather than you know original colors. So you can see how I move that blob of paint into the areas, and you see how the ice cream starts to pop with this middle thing being darker and the other areas, especially the like the left area being lighter. Later we're gonna add more colors and then uh, we will be able to make that uh, 3D look that I promised you at the beginning of the video. And now I leave the ice cream to dry a little bit because I don't want a lot of watery um, marks on the ice cream if I keep adding more paint. So now I'm mixing that the same uh, skin color that I mentioned to you before by mixing yellow and red. And I keep using the lighter shade at the beginning as I always do when I paint. As you can see, I added a little bit of more saturated paint uh, to the darker areas of the hand. If you look at the reference again, you will see that this top part of the hand is a little bit darker because of the light and finger under the ice cream is darker together with the shades under fingers i mean nails obviously and the root of the thumb so now i added a little bit more of the saturated pigment to my initial puddle skin puddle and right now i'm adding more shades to the areas where the skin is darker on the picture so i assume that the light comes from the bottom left corner that's the reason why the inner hand is lighter than the outer hand outer part of the hand and that's the reason why um, the shades work like this and then by doing this we can visually create that image that the object is not flat but it has the volume and um, like literally if you look at anything you will see lights and shades and that what makes up the whole object. So now I'm using just Carmen uh, for the nails. You can get creative and choose any color if you want. Oh, by the way, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I will teach you how to um, build up a 3D form by using lines. So I'm, I want to mention here, if you look at the ice cream you will see that the lines uh, where those breakages like a kind of breaking forms are of the ice cream they're a little bit curvy so if we just draw the flat lines we will like the straight lines we will be able to create the form but it's going to look a little bit different but if we look at the reference and even if you look at the uh, ice cream that i'm painting right now you will see that it has lines and shades that create that 3d look that make the object look realistic so it's it doesn't look flat on the, on the paper and here i mixed the same skin colors um, red and yellow and added a little bit more red pigment uh, to make the pigment more saturated and then the tiny 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 bit of uh, burnt umber because if you look uh, at the reference again you will see that kind of the, the outer surface of the handle looks a little bit uh, brownish i would say and now because my ice cream is dry i add more saturated pigment to it to make the colors pop and if you look at the reference again i'll keep referring to the reference because this is the only thing that you can compare and see actually what i'm doing if you look at the reference uh, you will see that the shades where i'm adding them right now are like the areas they are darker on the reference itself as i mentioned before since the light comes from the left uh, bottom um, of the of the painting of the picture of the reference or whatever you want to call it it's it makes the left side lighter compared to the rest of the ice cream and makes the right side darker it's like the grayish uh, the most saturated color compared to the whole thing So here I'm using a little bit of more saturated peach tone, peach color that we used before, just to highlight that middle of the ice cream and to make it in like in a balance uh, together with the yellow color and the orange color. And then I here I just keep adding uh, the shades more on the right side of the ice cream to make, to create that volume of the whole thing. more saturated carmen for the nails and again if you're wondering 
where I am looking and where I get in all those shapes and shades and colors, just look at the reference. Just look at it closely. Try to understand what comes from where. It's not that, you know, you just artists look at pictures or references or even if they are on the plain air and they're just looking at the nature and they kind of see the shape and they decide to paint it and then all of a sudden they're like oh yo i'm gonna add some colors in here i mean sometimes they do right <laughs> they are artists <laughs> uh but nevertheless you just need to study i will repeat and again and again because this is the only way you will be able to learn how to create those shades and how to create volume to to the objects that you are painting here i mixed a little bit of burnt umber and pyrrole orange for the ice cream stick if you don't have pyrrole orange you can just use uh, burnt umber or any brown color um, again it depends on your preferences if you want to be artistic you can just mix and match and see what suits your um, feelings best or you can just you know choose any color you want oh actually by the way i'm sorry i, I think i realized that instead of burnt umber i used raw sienna uh, that's the reason why it's a little bit of like a orangey look yeah so my bad <laughs> now i used burnt umber for those little shades uh, between the fingers and under the fingers honestly it all comes to details and studying the reference <laughs> you might hate me for this phrase right now but sorry <laughs> this is how i'm gonna instill this information in your heads because if you are here and you're watching this video and you want to learn how to paint especially if you want to learn how to paint realistically well this is my advice i cannot teach you otherwise because i was not born with the ability to paint everything that i see it also i mentioned this already before it took me lots of practice and lots of uh, observation and studying of everything so that's the reason why you know sometimes still some things they don't come out realistically as i wish they come out but you know this is the art process so we're all learning every single day all our lives you just need to accept it and just keep trying and trying and one day you'll be golden and you'll be able to do whatever you want it just depends how bad you want it just doing some final touch-ups some more shades saturated colors thanks so much for sticking with me until the end almost the end of the video <laughs> we're almost there so right now i'm just working uh, to highlight that shady area that i mentioned before the right side of the ice cream because the light comes from the um, bottom left corner and we need to ensure that our top right not the top yeah our right side of the ice cream significantly differs from the rest of the ice cream because there is no light theoretically there is no light on that part of the ice cream that's the reason why it should be darker and the key thing to remember is that you don't want to overwork your artwork or oh, work 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 <laughs> for that simple reason is because if you keep adding i know i mentioned the, in the, a lot of my videos that i like to add 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 and all the layers um because it's fun for me but again when you are painting with watercolors you can add all those layers but make sure if you're adding those you need to make sure they're light and um once you see that you are done like you don't have to add anything else you are very satisfied like there is no perfection you know there is always a room for something but with watercolors in particular you have to stop otherwise you will overwork your work and overwork your work i'll have to find another synonym for that <laughs> you just need to be uh, a little bit disciplined and uh, know when to stop and the final thing to do is a background the reference is not just purely blue so what i did is that i mixed cerulean blue with a little bit of green deep to create that you know laguna kind of color uh, maybe when i'm painting you cannot really tell that but when i'm mixing the colors you can see right now uh, it is a, a little bit not like just pure blue so i'm i'm just covering the whole area and then later i'm gonna make that paint a little bit more saturated i will add more pigment and i will create the shades um for the ice cream and for the hand and we'll be done
Hey, so we finished the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. I think it's pretty important if you want to create something realistic, you have to play with shapes because you can see different objects. Even if you look at your hand, you will see that light, like for example, like from my side, if I look at my hand, like facing the other way, you can see that the light comes here. So this, this side is a little bit lighter and this side is a little bit lighter, but here you can see a little bit light, a little bit dark. So as I mentioned before, just study whatever you want to paint. Start small, don't aim for something big. <laughs> Start small and you'll get there. I'll see you guys a little bit later this week. Thank you.